Welcome back everybody, it's your friend Herman. And in this video, I'm gonna be going over some of the cliche restaurants in New York City to see if they are worth it or not, as well as some of their alternatives. Heading over to Peter Luger's, one of the best uh, steakhouses uh, in, in the city apparently. This is one area where in New York City where the subway is not underground, but it's above ground, so that's why you see all the tracks upstairs. Uh, and it's, uh, yeah, right down to like two blocks away from uh, Peter Luger's uh, police station is. So the trains. The nice thing is that they make it very obvious that it, Peter Luger's is nearby. And here it is, the really, really famous Peter Luger Steakhouse. This time I'm meeting one of my uh, friends. Normally it's a solo trip or solo eating, but this time I actually have company. Peter Luger Steakhouse is located in the Williamsburg neighborhood of Brooklyn and has been around since 1887 and is essentially a New York City institution by this point. Got to do the, the camera eats first. Nope. <laughs> my friend Aaron and I, who you saw in my last video about pizza, decided to go for the steak for two. Damn, it looks incredible. The potatoes too, they look, they look really good. And yes, for this steak, we went medium rare because there is a special place in hell for those who get their steaks well done. Get that, get that try. Is it good? Is it as good as they say? Like butter? Awesome. It's juicy, juicy, juicy. Look at this. Is it juicy? Oh yeah, it's juicy. It's like so red too here in the camera. Super tender. And make sure to also baste your steak with its own juices. It just really takes it to a different level. Damn. We killed it. Yeah, the apple strudel with some whipped cream. Damn, that's a lot. See, now you actually change your mind. Yeah. What would, you, what would we rate this place? 10 out of 10. 10 yeah. Is this dessert? Damn. Yeah. So, in the end, even though Peter Luger's is overrated and cliche, was it worth it? 100%. Delicious. This is just a nice small museum uh, here in Manhattan. It's a, a museum of the dog. Um, it just goes to show you I'm not a one-dimensional man. Uh, I don't just only like cats. I also like dogs, which means I am not a psychopath. And for my next set of restaurants, I went to three different places to get pastrami sandwich, which is very well known in New York City, especially with a large Jewish population. You're going to have a lot of good delis. So I went with one that is very cliche and two that are a lot newer and maybe less well known as the main one. But I had to actually make this comparison to see which one is the best and is it worth the hype. So for my first pastrami sandwich was Sarge's Deli in Manhattan. This one has been around since the 1960s and offers a just a full service restaurant as opposed to some of the other delis that you might see in the city. And unlike some other places in restaurants in New York City, this one didn't have a really cramped interior like you feel like in other places. So it's a very good place to bring a group of friends or maybe family that you can go with. And for their centerpiece was their pastrami sandwich, which was cut into thinner slices than I'm, I'm used to. So it may be a preference thing, maybe a texture. I thought it was actually really good. Definitely no complaints. So stop by and give it a go. After Sarge's Deli, I headed over to Brooklyn, back to Williamsburg for my next stop. This is uh, Shalom Japan. It's on my email my list for a while. It's a Japanese Jewish fusion restaurant, so I, I had to check it out. Since Shalom Japan had a pastrami sandwich on their menu, I had to see how it compared to the other two Jewish delis on my list. Sometimes fusion restaurants don't really stay true to the original recipe and really tend to stray far away from it. However, their sandwich I thought was delicious and a little bit more manageable than some of the other places because the portion size was a little bit smaller, but it was also a little bit cheaper as well on top of that. So head over to Williamsburg, add the mustard, 
and give this one a try. And for my last one, which should come as no surprise, I headed back over to Manhattan. Katz's Deli, probably the most cliche, most overrated restaurant in New York City, but the one that actually lives up to the hype, I think. It's, it is it is expensive, but I think it's really good. Like, especially the pastrami is really, really juicy, so I'm gonna head into uh, get some. Katz's Deli has been serving Jewish cuisine since 1888, and one of their main things that they're known for is their pastrami on rye, which is the reason why I came here today. The very first thing when you come in is that they'll give you a ticket, so make sure you don't lose it because they'll charge you extra for it if you do. And since I came in at around 10 in the morning, there were no lines, I was able to order right away. Otherwise, the lines are very long and you're gonna be waiting for a very long time and will find difficulty getting a seat. And though out of the three places, this one is the most expensive of the three sandwiches. It is also the biggest and by far, I think the juiciest. Super juicy. It can get a little messy because of all of the juices. So make sure you have some napkins on hand at all times. So I think this one is still, at least here in New York City for me, uh, it has been my favorite pastrami that, that I've had so far. There is one other place though that I thought was just as good. It, that, two cats and that is Schwartz's Deli in Montreal but here in New York City I think this was still better well that and this the tour I hope you guys enjoyed the comparison between uh, the pastrami's uh, here in New York City and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and let me know in the comments down below which one is your favorite or if there's a totally different place that you recommend others to try and until next time bye